Are you on a small monitor? Yes, I'm on the 1080p. Okay, let's see. All right, so we are going to add a uh, data source that, or a, yeah, we're going to add a data source that's cached, uh, or a data set. We're going to add a popular data set and as a source and cache it locally. Um, so, for example, we can just do do from all source. Um, let's see, yeah, let's do. Uh, CSV and then DFML source. Maybe we should make a directory here. Yeah, DFML source cached. Um, or maybe this is like, yeah, eh, let's just say. Mm, what are these? These are data sets, right? Source data set. So let's make a folder called data set. Um, okay. And then DFML source. I'm just grab any source. Uh, or no, I'll grab the CSV source. Source CSV diff uh, source data set. Oh, source data set. And then we'll call this one, yeah, Iris. Okay, so, and then, oops. So let's take a look at that um, tutorial that we have. Docs, tutorials, model, TensorFlow, or, yeah, what is it, Iris? Iris, I could name for it. All right. So let's take a look at this and let's take a look at tests for it. All right, well, let's just write it first. All right, so we're just going to look at the CSV source and we're going to copy from that. So, Iris dataset source. Um, um, okay, and we're going to actually use a CSV source within this thing. Um, let's see, what's the best way for us to do this? Do we subclass from CSV source? No, we want to uh, we want to be a source, and then we will sort of provide transparent access into the CSV source. So maybe we need a new source to do transparent access into an existing source to write a wrapper around this. Um, but we will, um, okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, sort of, there's really no config for this thing um, because it just is what it is. Um, or I guess we could have a we could have a config with the URL. Um, all right, so yeah, we could have, um, you know, URL stir equals field URL to download data set from, since there's like multiple, um, there's multiple uh, places you could get this from. Um, and I think we have it actually cached within I think we have it uploaded to GitHub issues actually, so that we can avoid uh, problems with that uh, download site. Um, where did it go? Um, it might be in the tests. Tests. Um, no? All right, I swear we put it in there, but oh well. Um, it's in here. Yeah, so we have this this guy, the training. Oh yeah, okay, so we have the training and the test files. Training URL and test URL. Um, yeah, and then we just need, and then we just add the hashes, so, training hash and test hash. Uh, 
Oops. And then we should just be able to basically take the cache download unpack archive function or, or the cache download function. And uh, let's see. So it would be on a enter. So uh, load FD, dump FD. So this is memory based. So we just want to wrap. Then we have an existing source that wraps. Yeah, we do. We have data, the data flow source. So DF. That's actually a good one to use as a base here. So we can just take this and we can say, okay, here's the context. Um, we can sort of copy paste. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so there's the update method. We'll use our same source there. Okay. Here's the record method. Where's the usage of the parent source here? There we go. Bing, bada, boom. And then yield all the records here. Yeah, so we should probably create this wrapper source that just has these. We'll probably abstract this out into something, um, you know, when we when we hit that. What I was thinking was, can, can't we have a config option that has the names of these data sets and then the source has the implementation on how to fetch that? Uh, the source has the implementation on how to fetch that data set. Um, a, uh, yeah. a config option. Well, that would be, okay, sorry, can you say that again? So the source would be named data set source and then you have a config option on what data set do you want to fetch? like uh, iris for iris and then mm -hmm. uh, we have a dictionary of data sets or so something like that where it checks what data set are we fetching and then we fetch it whatever way we want with python well i think that's the thing is you know the way that you implement fetching it would be with a source right um like if we're doing if we're thinking about what's the dfml way of doing this you know um we we that when you say like choose the correct implementation choosing the correct implementation is you know making a source you know what i mean it's kind of like that it would, this this ends up being just like the scikit um just like the way that we implemented the scikit stuff yeah right does that make sense i see do you, i guess do am i not am i not seeing something about that way of implementing it mm. So, like having a separate source for each and every data set, like it 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 doesn't sound that in, intuitive to me. Uh, like, what what I particularly thought was when I mentioned this was if you have this data set source and then you mention source data set and whatever source and then what the data set name actually is, and you pass it iris. And then since Iris is CSV, or uh, I don't think it particularly matters, but we can just uh, fetch Iris in whatever way we want and then uh, feed it through the source. OK. Um, I think you'll find that the implementation of that ends up being this. If that, like, I see what you're saying. Um, you're saying basically key off of, you know, look, do you have sort of like maybe a dictionary that says, okay, like, what do I do for Iris, right? Okay, I download it. And then I, I, I download it, I do the string transforms on it, and I open a CSV source, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, okay, so I download it, I do a CSV source, I open the implementation. Let's see. So you end up saying, okay, this source is an alias. Okay, so you have this central source. So basically, we would have a key here, and you'd say, you know, which one do you want me to do? And then within the a enter method here, we would say, okay, if iris do blank. Um, so yeah, let's see. I think I'm just thinking. So because these may not sense. always be yeah so the way you are doing this like uh here you made training url and test url as config options mm -hmm. right but shouldn't this be 
uh, like training data set should be a separate source and then test should be a separate data source. Oh, yes, yes, it should. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah. Okay, let me just, let's see. Because, yeah, we would have iris train, iris test. Because I'm just thinking, I think part of the reason why this might look, look, look like it does is because we just, we have, we need these base classes first. So now if we have this data set source and data set source context, right, then we end up with, um, this um, so URL and URL yeah I mean you could do it yeah you could do it like that um, yeah you could do it like that yeah it's just then how do you okay so then we have we essentially end up with this giant dictionary of things that map iris training to iris it's just we we've ended up with a new way of doing a plugin system now you know what i mean yeah and and you can effectively get the same thing by doing it this way you just might want to change the syntax right so for example like i see what you're saying like you from an ease of use implementation perspective it's you're saying it, it it's easier for me to implement a source if i do it this way right like it's more straightforward but yeah and what i'm saying is you can create the same thing by doing a wrapper around the sort the existing source implementation right and now you've now you've avoided creating a new plugin system, right? Because now you end up with multiple instances of, of our plugin system, right? You have one instance that's, um, you know, the way that we do it. And then you have this other way that's like, okay, now, now let me key off this thing and load this other thing. And, and you run into this thing where if you have an edge case, now you need to, so say you have an edge case where a data set is authenticated behind something, right? Say you're doing Kaggle and now you need some kind of authentication parameters, right? To download this data set. Now you have to implement a way of passing parameters to this wrapper thing, right? Yeah. And now you may as well have used this, used the original plugin system where you can pass parameters. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is that, okay, so yeah, that's one thing. Okay. So this, and then, so this is, so I think the thing is that, that what we can make this in such a way that it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't end up being as uh, cumbersome as it is now, right? So, because currently we're, we're making, so let's let's look at the way that this would ideally work, right? So let's say def, um, def iris data set or data set, let's just say def iris. And, you know, we take optionally, because you might host a URL somewhere else. So optionally we take a URL, a hash, and yeah, we actually take a URL and a hash. Um, okay. Okay. So, and then we return a CSV source, right? So. And this is actually, we need to make that damn cache download function do this without a wrapper because right now you have to do this. Because right now this is a decorator and we really need to make this not a decorator so you could just call it. Um, so cache download URL. This would be, it would look more straightforward if it wasn't a decorator, but you have to decorate it, right? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and then we just say return func. Uh, or no, we do return CSV source func. Cache download contents hash. And then uh, pathlib dot path. Um, 
home directory. Um, dot cache. Um, DFML data sets. Um, Iris. Um, all right. And then the hash is, where is the hash? Okay. Train. Right. Okay. So we download the file, we return a CSV source um, with the, uh, you know, with the appropriate call or yeah, we don't need that. Um, yeah. Download. So Iris training. Right, so this is the uh, would this is this kind of like what you would be looking for? So say cache download was really just you know this function here, right? Then this would be the kind of simplicity of implementation that that we're after, right? Is that correct, or is there a yes. simpler implementation? I don't think so. This this looks fine. Like, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so this this yeah. So this is what it looks like here. Um, and then I think, you know, th we also have to do, um, uh, what is this? We also have to make, uh, where's that SED command? Yeah. Okay. There's that SED command. Um, and do, do, do. Right, so this is that find replace uh, to make it look like re.sub. And I had to do this regex sub thing the other day, and I totally screwed up the order of the arguments and couldn't figure out what was going on. I was like, why is it not sub? Like, I can't find it. I totally screwed up the order of the arguments. Okay. Uh, replace and then string. Yeah, that is not intuitive to me. I don't understand that, but okay. I feel like it should be string and then replace, but I'm not going to burn that into my brain anymore. Okay. Re.compile. Um, oh, okay, now here's the thing is that if that file exists, then if that file exists, okay, we want to download the file. This is a trick. Yeah, if we want to we download the file, and now the problem, the problem with the cache download function here is that... Um, we're immediately going to end up here. Let's just create a new file. We'll immediately end up with a uh, you know, original. We're gonna we're gonna modify it as soon as we download it, and then you know that's no good. Um, so all right, let's just do read out sub. Um, and then pathlib dot path. Now uh, let's just do this. So original path is this pathlib.path .path object, and then the uh, okay. So now we'll we'll substitute, and we'll write it back to. Um, uh, replace just, oh man we don't need to do that or yeah we do we need to say okay replace path equals original path um, dot um, And then we'll just put without the original. Um, all right, and then we instantiate a CSV source with this replace path. And that should be that. Um, all right, okay, yeah, so get the original path download it um, where is our damn syntax here oh there it is 
No. Okay, we have syntax error somewhere, whatever. Okay, so then this is the source. So we need, so basically what we want is we want some kind of decorator that takes this iris training and converts it into a source. Um, so we could say, you know, data set source and then iris training or iris.train. Yeah. And now this, okay. So this, this, this would effectively become, you know, our function that gets called right here. So this data set source. So if we make this data set source decorator, we would say def, you know, data set source, uh, entry point name. Um, yeah, so data set source, entry point name, and then we create a new new class here. So class data set source. Type entry point name. So class name, we create the class name. Do you want to keep doing this or is this, um, should we take oh, no, this no, offline? No. Cause this is a lot of me coding right now. So, and I don't, I don't know if you want to, you know, if, if you want to, if, if you want to do something I'm, I'm else. I'm really like in a Zen mode right now. Okay, I'm cool. Focusing. All right. Um, so yeah, entry by name, replace. So we do replace dot dot title. Um, and then we replace, so we create, we're creating a class name here. Um, yeah. Right. Um, so now it should be formatted camel case. Um, and we'll say, you know, plus data set source. Um, so now we have Iris. So this should give us Iris train data set source. Um, okay. Iris. Um, right. um, so now we create the class, we subclass from data set source. So this is the type. So type creates a new class with the class name and these are the base classes and these are the properties. So we can say, um, config and then so this is okay so this is a part of the unified config problem is that okay so the unified config thing and i was talking to sakshan about this recently is what the ideal thing that we would have here is the ability to with the operations right when we wrap with op and we auto create definitions i'd like it would be great if we could auto create a config um and th because that would allow us to configure the operate that would allow us to take any function and create a config out of the arguments and uh, that's powerful because then we can obviously use the existing config in infrastructure to instantiate or call in this case that that function right and so this is something that we don't really have yet, uh, but I guess we'll just have it right now. Um, where's my stupid caps lock? Come on. Okay. So, because we have this make config function, where's this make config function? Make config class. Make config. Where's that? Make config. Okay, damn it. Function and create a data class. Okay, so what oh yes, yeah, this is just a wrapper around the uh the other the other one fields args. Okay, namespace. So this just looks just like data classes dot make data class. This is just a wrapper around this. Yeah, we need to document that thing. Okay, so what's the syntax here? Okay. Mm, yeah, okay. Um just so we parse the arguments, we 
grab the type value and the default value. And uh, so we need to do this. We need pi inspect um, dot get signature. All right. Oh, inspect dot signature. So this gives us the arguments of a function and it'll give us their default values as well. So there's the annotation and it should give us the default somewhere. So, okay. Does it give the default values? I... Um, yeah, it will. Um, we have code for that. So what, what was the problem we faced with scikit? The, there weren't default, default values defined. For I them. think, yeah, there weren't type hinting default values. So what we had to do is we had to parse yeah. the numpy doc string to grab the default value. So we have code to do this. Yeah. Make config numpy will do this. Um, did we get, I think actually where is, oh, we may have code to do this actually model, um, dfml util. Um, make config numpy, make config tensorflow that parses a Google style doc string. Um, but we don't have any, oh my God, did we really not do the like most basic case? I think so. Um, I think that there should be one in model PyTorch. I think Sakshan was going to implement this in model PyTorch. because he has Oops. Yeah. All right, make PyTorch config. Inspect PyTorch params. Okay, we just need to take this out of PyTorch because this is already what we want. Um this is exactly what we want. So, because none of this is PyTorch specific. So let's just take this out of PyTorch. Oh, fantastic. All right, so, and we're, we're just make config, so make util config, util config numpy. So um, let's just do inspect, or, well, we don't want to name it inspect, it might get confused. Um, yeah, that's just, Yeah, oh my gosh, that's so funny. We should have just not named this PyTorch. Um, okay, make config, inspect, inspect params. <coughs> All right. I think this is what we want here. Um, so let's see, config is dot, util dot dot, DFML dot dot dot. Okay. Sweet. Um, yeah. Wow. All right. Hey, that was easy. <laughs> um, all right. So now we just need to call that. So we can just say make config inspect and then pass it the um, okay entry point name. And then we need a we need a func to decorate here. So we need to. This is a uh, decorate it with an argument. So we need to do def. All right, so we get pass entry point name, and then we return a decorator wrapper, which gets called with func, and then inspect dot, uh, or what is it, func tools dot wraps. So we wrap, um, yeah, we do, we wrap func, and we turn wrapped. So this is a wrapped func. And now these are the args and kw args. So these are now, you know, these guys, so args, that's this. Um, so then we call. All right, so now there's a slight variation here where, so to do handle async case. Um, so return async def wrapped if if inspect dot is coroutine um, 
yeah, if inspector is coroutine. And, you know, should we open, we should probably, should we be doing a context manager here is my question, because then we can yield, and that's usually helpful. We should actually be doing a context manager here. So let's yield CSV source, because, you know, there's always times when you want to open temporary resources and stuff, and if we just do that now, then we won't need to worry about it later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so when the source closes, we could clean up stuff, right? Um, for example, we could just destroy this. Yeah, we could we could keep this, this modified file in temp if we wanted to. Um, so let's just, and that simplifies this case because when we're always doing is async gen. Um, because then, because or else you have to handle the case whether it's a coroutine or well, you you wouldn't because you're just looking for a return value is async generator. Uh, okay, um, so then we can just do yield. Um, okay, and so wrapper wrapped func tools wraps func, um, and we should also say. Um, we should say, you know, func equals context lib dot context manager func. Okay. So we create a con so we wrap func, we we take the entry point, we create the class name, we wrap func, we turn it into a context manager because or else it's just gonna be a generator. Turn it into a context manager. Um we yield the so our wrapper our wrapped function yields the result. The wrapper returns the wrapped function, um, and now we make a class. We make a data set source class where config is. Let's see, the config is you know whatever the config for the function is, and okay, wrapped func, wrapper func, okay. Return wrapped. No, we don't actually return wrapped. We return. Okay, so we have two options here. We can take this function, and we can. So this is so this is a thing that. Okay, one second. Coffee. All right. Okay. We have two options here. We're writing this this wrapper we're writing this 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 decorator here that takes the function and you know creates a source out of it so now if you look at the op decorator what the op decorator does is it adds the implementation that it creates so it creates an operation implementation and it sets it as a property on the function that it was wrapping and that way we don't actually change the function so if you return, for example, if we were to create a class and return the class, now Iris training that variable that because the function is also a variable and the variable Iris training is a class now and I can't just call that class anymore. Right. Um, so actually, yeah, so we have a bit of a we have a bit of a thing here. So because we've wrapped it. We've wrapped it as a context manager. So right now I could say with Iris training as whatever, and I would get a CSV source if I wanted it, right? Now, now the thing is, okay, so let me just write a function here. Um, Okay, right. so right now I could do with Iris training as, uh, you know, Iris training, or with Iris training as source, and now, you know, source equals CSV source. And, and you know, I can go from there, right? Um, Oops, so source is the instantiated CSV source. And so we can do this, right? In this case, we return wrapped here, right? So this is, this is, and we'll, we'll just delete this for now. So this is this case, right? Now <clears throat> we have the option of returning the class, right? And in that case, 
we will create this class and when we you know then if we call iris training or iris training itself in this case is an instance is this data set source subclass mm -hmm. data set yeah iris train data set source right in this case so example return class um so the advantage of this is that when we list all the entry points um yeah when we list all the entry points or the advantage of this is when you register the entry point it's clear that you're pointing directly at the at this iris training function now it's kind of not clear too though because it's like well this is a function it's not a data like I, I can decorate it and it becomes it but then now i can't use this function anymore if i wanted to right um and so so and then the third option is you know set it as a property right so now you can say you know, um, and this is what we do with op. So now we have, so source is an instantiated CSV source or, you know, so iris train dot class, um, where iris training dot class is, you know, iris train data set source. And in this case, we say, you know, we return wrapped um, and we say wrapped dot class equals class right? or wrap dot class is this right and now we have access to both things so I think I think that this is um, actually the this sort of answers our question here with the with regards to like what what should we do in this case um, you preserve this and this is why op does it the way it does is you preserve the ability to still use the the thing right the function at its base level if you set the thing as a you know set this new thing we're creating as a property right does it does that all make sense yeah 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 okay so so yeah so now now we have this class now we have this yeah so now we have class which is a train data set source and we have you know training and we can just use that to create a csv source if we wanted to right and that is nice from the perspective of creating unit tests right and it's just like also just because this is the code that's there like if i want to be able to call a code that's there you know that's nice to be able to do um from from an end user like from from a random developer perspective looking at the code like hey what if i just wanted to call this function and not have any of the wrapped stuff um okay so we create the config and then we create the um um we create the config and then we create the, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we need to set the function, yeah. So we need to say wrapped. So wrapped, wrapped. Well, let's, yeah, wrapped. Let's just call it wrapped for now. All right, so we have this data set source and let's just actually make this source a wrapper source. And that way we can reuse this thing. So, because we we you know this is this is something that we'll probably do somewhere else too. So might as well just create a base class for it. Let's get rid of this crap here. All right. So wrapper source context. This is just a wrapper around you know source context. Pass through. Complete pass through. Uh, enter and exit whenever and here's a wrapper source um, and it is you know wrapper around whatever it's config sources um, let's see and actually maybe we should not make that config source we should probably make that source um, because yeah because we don't want to we don't know if this thing is going to have a config somehow um, so now basically whatever we set is okay yeah so whatever we set is so data set source context is source or wrapper source context and this thing is a wrapper source 
And so what we can do here is say, yeah, a enter super dot a enter. And we can say self dot source. So So with self dot wrapper self dot config dot as can we do export as an export as source. Bam, I think this is it. Um, a enter. Yeah, data set source. Okay. So I think this is I think this is it, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, all right, yeah, so we've got this source here, that's the wrapper source, right? And this basically just says, okay, you know, my, okay, well, yeah, so let's do source. Uh, okay, so this would be an instantiated source. So self.source equals instantiated source. Okay, yeah, just the A inner method. A inner method should always return self. So that's not really necessary. We can just await that. Um, so yeah, so basically the wrapper source enters the source. The wrapper source context enters the source context. Very straightforward, just pass through on everything here. Um, and then the data set source basically says, okay, I have this wrapper property, um, you know, and that's, or this wrapped wrapped property right which is this function that 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 we've wrapped we the and I, and I have some kind of config right and so my config at the point of a enter the configs instantiated with all of its properties um so um yeah the config will be instantiated with all of its properties so we can just say export and that will return a dictionary and we can expand we expand the dictionary with key, you know key, keyword argument expansion and now so we're calling this wrapped function which is this guy wrapped and we'll do keyword argument expansion which calls iris training which does keyword argument expansion which says you know url equals url and contents hash equals contents hash uh, which are already set from their default values so they'll probably just you know they'll get the same thing unless they're overridden um and then we call the function. So we do this cache download. We can optimize this, or we can we can make this more user friendly later. So cache download decorator. We decorate the func, and that way when we call func, so we need to call func. Um, so we call func. That results in the cache download happening. Um, so this downloads, this runs the download. We say the replace path is okay. This file in the cache, this original. We resolve that path. So now we have this replace path. We read the we read the contents. Is that great? Okay. We read the contents of the original file. We do a regex replacement here, saying replace the headers, and we write that back out to the replace path, and we return a CSV source, or we yield a CSV source containing you know that will reference the contents of this replace path, and it doesn't have that write property set so it should just end up with you know file name equals replace path and yeah and then that ends up here so this gets yielded here as source source equals source super dot a enter i think this is what we want so let's find out <laughs> let's find out if this explodes spectacularly um so bim test test um there let's see bim test source test data set so essentially defining a new data set would be defining a new function yes exactly so now all we have to do is do this right and actually i really don't like that we're using train and training different places so let's see training 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 So now we have sort of more like what what you wanted, right? Which is just sort of like a you know a, a lookup table, right? And so now now the other thing is that we can do what Saksham has done with the PyTorch models and add a dynamic enumeration 
of possible plugins. So not only will you load from entry points, right? So we can override the base source load class method to say that because right now the base source load class method class method I think is just passed through to entry point load, so we can sub like we can we can create a, a method in in this source. Let me just go in there. Diffml source source. So okay, there's no so this is a base data flow facilitator object, or let's see, yeah, the base data flow facilitator object. Where is it? Yeah, base data flow facilitator object, which is in base. Where is that? Base configurable, okay, which is a base configurable. Wait, okay, no. Yeah, here's the base data, okay, yeah, and it's an entry point. And DFML util entry point. So this is entry point. So the entry point class, class method, load method goes through all of the entry points, right? Which is basically, uh, yeah, that's set with this class entry point property. So this is dffml.source, right? So when we look in, um, uh, when we look in setup.py, that is all of this stuff, right? So that's these keys here. So this, this in question is dffml.source. So we can override this uh, method in source here we can override the load method to wherever yeah wherever this source yeah, base source so we can override that load class method we're not going to do it now but um, and we can say you know uh, source super dot load and then you know there's there's handling here based on whether you did um, you know loading uh, equals none, right? So basically, whether you did um, one source or multiple sources, and we can say, okay, if you failed to load it, then look through. We can enumerate all the sources that we created within this file dynamically, just like we did with the psychic classes, and sort of say, you know, we can just sort of in, dump dump the contents of this file here, this uh, source data set, or everything within DFML source data set, and we can say, hey, you know, let me load. Let me let me go grab any thing, any source source uh, classes that reside within DFML source data set. And if the load fails from the entry point, see if we can load. You know, see if that exists in something that we've defined in that file, right? Um, so that's something we can do um, later. Uh, and that way, that way we sort of auto anything that's defined in here gets auto exposed as a source. Um, so this would yeah import uh, from util dot testing dot yeah or yeah async test case. How are we doing on time? Okay, cool. Import uh, async test case. Um, it's iris test iris training. Data set source. All right, so and then we want to import that guy. So from default dot source dot data set dot iris import iris training and this is how I run my tests which I've showed you this before Oh, yeah, we copy pasted all this crap. Um, we need CSV import CSV source. 
Okay, uh, config dot dot base config field. I thought we got this somewhere, but maybe not. Oh, did we get entry point? We didn't get the entry point. Yeah, that's a good thing to also get. Um, yeah, context manager data classes. Okay, we don't need that. Async IO, don't need that. Iter tools. Okay, we need inspect and context lib. Okay. Uh, So we need inspect, context loop, we probably need typing. Don't need any of that. Okay, man, yeah, we'll see, it'll blow up on us. So we can just, oh, base source. All right, great. Oh, and we need to do this entry point here. Oh, we don't want this, we want, um, make config inspect which is from util uh, config inspect so yeah we got that guy context manager data set sort okay context lib entry point name. oh entry point yeah we need to create this guy so this is a new type and we need to wrap this with entry point and then entry point name, right? And that is the, so this is the uh, right-hand side of, where are you? All right, so the entry point decorator is the right-hand side of this so or the left hand side so this will be you know for example if we do once we do at that at entry point that's setting that that's setting the entry point so remember that entry point um within dfml util entry point this entry point here so this is you know dfml.source and that is grabbed from, since this is, so this, the source class subclasses from entry point. So the entry point property on anything subclassing for source is dfml.source. Entry point label is the like CSV. So this, when we do that at entry point decorator, um, it sets the entry point label, right? So this is entry point label. So this is where we're going to be setting dataset.iris. Um, so entry point label is getting set to dataset.iris in this case. Um, okay, well, where was I? Um, none type is not callable. Uh, it's probably just dataset source. Oh yeah, return, return wrapper, func tools. Okay, make config inspect. No, it needs a it needs a name. Class name. Oh. So it does not. So assert true. Um, I was training. Yeah, there may be a method for this. I can the unit test thing has so many, so many helper methods. Okay, yes, it has that class variable, um, and then so now we test that the name is what it should be. And that would be this. Great, that is also what it should be. And then, so assert class, okay, let's see. Um, I think we're now into assert class. Okay, what do we wanna know now? Uh, I guess let's just like try to instantiate it. 
that's right. So like test. Um, but let's see test. Uh, okay, so now this is more of a different thing here. Test data set source. So this is test. Um, so let's call this, let's have this decorator. Um, okay, so what do we want to test here? We want to test that like the wrapper that, that this, we're going to try to test this part here, this data set source stuff. So, um, so I guess let's just enter the source. So async with, async with, and eh, let's just, let's just start here. Let's just run it. Async with, actually, I think we can just call, let's just call await load. We'll just load it and, and test that the records are correct. Um, all right, so this should be the class, and we'll just instantiate it with the default arguments, and we'll load it, and we'll check that the that the record that that there's there's data in the file. async generator can't be used outside of the weight expression, so class. Uh, oh yeah, all of this was not async, huh? Um, or wait a minute, yeah, wait, load, wrapped, wrapped, okay, with, wrapped, okay, so wait, this is still, async generator can't be used in a weight expression, load, let's just make sure that this instantiates the right thing first. Okay, so this is an iris data set training source. Okay, and there's the config. So that's, yeah, and it's an instantiated class. So we should be able to pass it to load async with as source. So this should enter the source. Okay, yeah, config has no export. How about as dict? Attribute error, enter, self.wrapped. Okay, so func should be context lib. There's training. Context manager, func, yield, wrap. Maybe we need to do it on this too. I'm not familiar with it. I was trying to get multiple arguments for URL. So, okay, maybe that was the trick. Maybe we needed to, you'd think that Funk Tools wraps would preserve the context manager. Okay, so URL. Yeah, okay, so it looks like KWRX is correct there. And there's no, or wait. Okay, it looks like args is getting, oh, it's self. Is it being passed self? Yeah. There we go. There we go. That should, there you go. So now we're not getting self. I always forget that. All right, so ours, uh, the generator context manager has no attribute a enter self.source. Oh, we need to return self. Wait, return source, super source. Oh, wait, self.source.a enter. Generator context manager, self.source. 
Okay. What's this? Context loop generator. Oh, I think this is because we double wrapped it. Maybe it didn't need to be double wrapped like that. Yeah, because this guy yields something going on here. Attribute error A enter self wrapped. So we call wrapped context loop context manager func yield yield func. Oh, that's what it is. With func as result yield func or road result. Uh, yeah, obviously. Okay. And then we need that call to, or we need that decorator. Duh. Okay. Path of not defined. All right, now we're making progress. Cache download not defined. God, I really miss. It. I need to get that Vim plugin to auto import stuff. No such file or directory. Okay, we need to create the parent. If not, original path. Parent. Dot is dir. Dot. Okay, dir. Parents equals true. Oops. <laughs> Can't go. I accidentally made a directory. No such file. Directory data sets. Chain original. What is this? Wrapped read text. This funk. Locals funk was never awaited. Okay, yeah, that cache download function only works on. Uh, this cache download function only works on. Um, 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 uh, whatever. Let's just do this. URL lib. It only works on coroutines. Okay, where's that? My favorite URL lib function. This is great. I love this thing. Uh, this thing is great. URL. I posted it on there. They are like considering removing stuff. I was like, please do not remove this thing. This is great. Um, where to go? URL retrieve. Yeah, check this out. Um, where's where's no? Where is it? Where is it? Where's the hacks? Come on, come on. Aha, yeah, with progress, download with progress. This is great. Okay. Okay, I think URL, URL retrieve. I think it does it do it to the temporary? That's the question. Or retrieve file name. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this report hook is great. Um, stir. Uh, we don't need this replace path. Oh, yeah, we do. Let's just do it like this. Let's just change as few things as possible right now. Alright, 
we'll scrap that for now. Um, let's just make sure that down is the right place. Test source, test data set. Unknown URL type. Oh, sysarg v1. <laughs> um, duh, don't do that. Store object has no attribute from the most of path that exists. Self.config. CSV source. So it downloaded it to, tr it's, we got training. So it looks, looks pretty correct to me. Um, except for stir object has no attribute file name. So the config, oh, it's just, yeah, okay, maybe we just, let's just set file name. All right, hey, how's that? How about this now? Async generator can't be used in a wait expression. Oh, record for record in. None type. It's no attribute. Oh, source, source. What? In records. Line one fifty. None type. We forgot to return something somewhere. Something returned none. This. Right. Does your regular there we go. game look like this? Uh, no, are you kidding me? I'm never so successful. Um, this is this worked out really well. This went so smoothly. Hey, we got all our records, and I have to go to my next meeting. Um, <laughs> that was like I can't believe how well that went. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, okay, well, let's sync later. I'm gonna post this video. Um, I can't like this went really smoothly. I'm very excited about this. Um, well, Can thanks, Josh. Yeah, let, let me push this to a branch. All right. Hey, that was fun. Uh, thanks for indulging me there. Um, I said it'll take two minutes, but I guess it took an hour and a half. So, <laughs> But hey, fun stuff. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you here. Oh, no, no, no. All right. I will push this. Thanks, Yash. Have a good one.